Hello students, welcome back to another education class and we will be continuing with the previous lesson that we were taking that is the fourth chapter of your textbook Heredity and Environment and in the last class students we have already dealt with what is Heredity isn't it? So today we will be dealing with Environment okay so here Environment we can understand it as nurture or environment and in the previous class we have understood that hereditary is something that we get as a gift from our parents right we it's not our choice but we already as we are born into this world we inherit some certain things from our parents right so it is quite natural so this environment today's uh, portion we can understand it as nurture that means something which uh, which help us to uh, mold as a person okay so we can understand hereditary as inner or nature because this is already inherited in us as we are born isn't that so we can see that this is natural and this environment we can simulate the environment according to different situations okay so today we will be studying about environment so here environment means interaction with family neighbors school and this includes even nutrition also that means environment as a whole would mean the interaction that you do in the family, in the school or in your neighbor, neighborhood. And it is said that the nutrition, the food that you take, that is also part of your environment. Okay. And then something which surrounds the individual. So environment, we can understand it as something which is always surrounding the individual. So we are always surrounded by our family, our friends, our neighbors, our school, right? So we cannot get away from it because man is a social animal, right? So we are always surrounded by one environment or the other. And in your textbook, they have given different definitions of the meaning of environment and one definition given by Woodward is environment covers all the factors here when they say all it means the inner as well as the outer factors that means all the factors combined together okay so environment covers all the factors that have acted on the individual so whatever factors that are acting upon the individual to help him mold his personality we can understand it as environment so that is the definition given by woodward okay so why is environment important for us so the first one we can understand it as it guides in the development process of the individual so we understood in the previous classes that hereditary is something that is very important isn't it so just like that environment is also very important for the individual and it helps in the development process of the individual okay and then uh, can create environment and we can try to understand the environment so we can create an artificial environment also and then uh, actually we can say that environment is artificial in nature because depending on the situation or depending on the child or the, or the individual we can mold his or her environment so it is quite uh, you know uh, we can manipulate the environment we can understand like that okay so that is why environment is important and then we can understand environment as controlled or uncontrolled environment so just like the previous point that I, I've cited we can control some certain environment and some certain environment we cannot control so example of controlled environment can be maybe the school right so there some certain kind of uh, instruction or the atmosphere is made in such a way that it is controlled in nature and we mold the students likewise and one example of uncontrolled environment can be example the family so the parents that you are born into and then the kind of economic situation that you have at home we cannot change that isn't that suppose for example if i don't like my parents then i cannot go and change uh, somebody's parents into mine isn't that so we cannot control that family environment in a certain way okay so that is it and then what are some of the types of 
environment. So the first one is the physical environment. So what is physical? Physical is to do with the uh, geography that is around us, the things, the atmosphere, the weather conditions that are there around us. Okay. So some examples of physical environment can be the geography that we're living in, the food, the temperature, and then the, even the nutrition that we are taking. So all this also uh, can be understood as the physical environment okay now let us go into the next one that is the mental environment so mental environment can be to do with the intellect isn't that so the best example of mental environment can be the school because in the school you are taught so many things related to your intellect isn't that so we can take the example of the school environment as a mental environment key okay. and then atmosphere that is essential for mental environment and then intellectual envir environment or atmosphere at home school or in the library or uh, in the uh, laboratory also so for example if in a certain home the parents are educated then that certain student or that child may, might be getting a lot of intellectual uh, uh, atmosphere, good atmosphere for the intellectual development, isn't that? Because the parents are educated, so apart from the school lessons also, the parents will try to teach the child so many good things, isn't that? So the mental environment, the atmosphere at home is also very important okay and then uh, example i've already given you about the school and then in the laboratory or places like the library also your intellectual uh, development is taking place because you have to read a lot of books you have to do some experiments where you can learn right so all those are mental environment okay and then what about the social environment social environment can be the traits or the values that your parents teach you at home or maybe the religion that you're following because each religion will teach you something good or the other isn't that and then for us nagas that can be the folk tales or the folklores or our culture all those will come under a social environment key okay? and then uh, things like art literature and music will also come under social environment because these situations when you learn try to learn literature or art or music your intellect is enhanced isn't that and then you get interested but in order for you to get interested in that particular situation then uh, good music has to be there or good literature has to be there for instance right or there has to be a good music teacher isn't that so that is why the social environment is also very important and it needs to be enhanced by the elders of the child or the student okay and then the next one is the cultural environment so what is cultural environment uh, this cultural environment and social environment are a bit related okay we cannot totally segregate that okay so cultural environment can be the beliefs the practices the customs the behaviors right so all those are cultural environment and sometimes we see that the western culture is a little different right and then the asian culture is different or maybe the indian culture is different right because there is differences in the lifestyle or the way that children are brought up right so that is why cultural environment is also very important okay so those were some of the types of environment that we understood now uh, let us try to understand the significance of hereditary and environment so why is hereditary and environment important so certain psychologists or educationists they have given different different views okay and the views the theories will uh, differ from one person to another but we must also understand that in each theory or each finding we also learn something good about the uh, human behavior that is why we in education we also study a lot of theories and findings okay so according to a certain uh, philosopher that is Rook in 1970 he came up with a formula known as DL is equal to H into E into T so what do you mean by this so development is equal to development that is there in the individual is equal to hereditary 
environment and then time also. So these three things, hereditary, environment and time are very important. Hereditary and environment, it will help the individual to mold, isn't that, to shape the personality, to learn things, right? And then time factor is also very important because for a small child, we cannot force a lot of information to the child, isn't it? Or we cannot force learning into the child. But as he grows up in this world, as time changes or, you know, as time goes on, he learns things by himself, right? So that is why time is also very important, okay? So if you remember this formula, then you can be smart students also. If you remember this formula, then you can frame your answers by yourself in the exam, right? So you need to remember this, okay? And then there are also some controversies surrounding the concept of hereditary and environment. So what are some of those controversies? Some educationists, they say that only hereditary is uh, important for the growth and development of a child. And some say that environment is important and hereditary is not important. So there are a lot of con controversy and also some educationists of the modern times, they say that both are important. So uh, there are many controversies surrounding the concept of hereditary and environment. Okay. And then synthesis so what do you mean by synthesis both hereditary and environment in the modern times i told you about the controversy right but in the modern times in the present times we must understand that there should be perfect blending of both hereditary and environment both the things that we inherit from our parents and the situation that we face in this world all these things are important for a person's growth and development okay so there should be synthesis there should be blending of both the hereditary and the environment so that the child can grow into the best citizen or the best individual okay so we can understand that these two concepts or these two things are inseparable okay so both must go together hand in hand Okay. And then what about the educational implications? I told you in the previous classes also that whenever you study a concept or uh, whenever you try to study the human behavior, at the end, the educational implications become very important. For example, in the stages of human development, educational implications were important so that the teachers and uh, the you know policy makers they could understand they can understand what kind of lesson or concept should be given to what kind of age of a student right so in this chapter hereditary and environment what are some of the educational implications let us try to understand them one by one varying needs of the individual so what are varying needs we understand that the human beings we are all different from one another we are very unique isn't that so according to the individual differences uh, the teachers must try to cater to the needs of the students isn't that so some students might be very gifted or very intelligent some students might be normal in the classroom right and then who knows some students might be a little slow learners also right but it is the duty of the teacher to cater to all the needs of the students okay so that is why we try to understand the hereditary and the environment what kind of uh, home situation or home environment does the child come from or what does uh, how are the parents and then what is the environment that he is living in if we try to understand all these things and you know uh, mold the learning process in that manner then we will be able to give the best kind of learning to the student okay so that is why we need to understand the varying needs of the students we also we the teachers also need to understand the gifted child the normal child and the slow learners okay and then it is also very important to blend curricular activities of the school with the co-curricular activities so why is that blending important is because see some students they are good in academics they are very good in 
uh, studying their lesson, right? And for some students, they're very good in sports and other games and other activities that the school uh, organizes, right? So in order to cater to all the uh, interests of the students, the school environment or the school situation and the curriculum must be blended with both the curricular, the academic activities, the things that you study in books, as well as co-curricular activities, that is the games and the sports and the different activities that you do in the school, okay? So that is why uh, it is important. And then better learning environment. So I told you about the gifted child, the normal child and the slow learners, right? So if the teacher in the classroom is able to understand or categorize all those students, then the teacher can give his or her instruction in that kind of manner, isn't it? And then all the students in the classroom, they'll be able to uh, learn at the maximum level, right? So better learning situations are also uh, taken out when we try to understand the hereditary and environment of the individual or the student, okay? And then we also talked about the individual difference, right? So individual difference is also very important. Each child or each student is different from the other and uh, each student is very unique and special in nature so it is the duty of we the teachers to you know uh, blend or cater to all your needs that is why trying to understand the individual difference is important so now how is individual di difference relating to this hereditary and environment like i told you it's individual difference is not only about the personality or the behavior of the child okay individual difference would mean the kind of parents that uh, the student have may be literate or illiterate, talented or very uh, not very talented or farmers or uh, educated officers, right? So the children, the students, you the students, you come from different, different kind of uh, parents, right? So we need to, we the teachers, we need to understand your individual difference. And there is individual difference in the environment also. What kind of home that you come from, whether you are from a rich or average or a poor family, right? And, you know, uh, the different kind of interests that you have also. We need to understand all those so that uh, all the individual differences are cutted and then you learn the best form of learning in the schools. That is why we study hereditary and environment. Okay, so that is the end of the lesson and today in this class we have understood about the meaning of environment and then why environment studying about or understanding about the environment is important for learning and then we also understood the different types of learning like physical environment the mental environment the social the cultural environment right so that is it and then uh, the significance of hereditary and environment in education okay so whatever things that we learn we are to connect it with education isn't that and then we also learn about the synthesis how hereditary and environment is inseparable they should go together and then they should blend together they are inseparable in nature right and then lastly we also try to understand the educational implications why we the teachers or the policy makers we need to understand about hereditary and environment of the students so that we can cut through to the individual differences you know we can understand the students better and then we can blend the curricular as well as the co-curricular activities of the school right so that is the end of the fourth chapter of your lesson and we the teachers we have already explained the concepts in a very general manner we cannot go each and everything in detail but it is the duty of the student to read the books and study so that the concept will be more clear to you